Joining me now to talk more about al-Qaeda cells two years after the death of Osama bin Laden is David Gartenstein-Ross, Senior Fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Um, David, in your opinion, opinion, what is the current status of al-Qaeda? Is it stronger or weaker than it was two years ago? Uh, it's a very difficult question to answer. Most people in my field would say that it's weaker than it was two years ago. And certainly, if you look at the core leadership, it's weaker. They've experienced a great deal of attrition. Uh, however, al-Qaeda has really changed. Uh, if you look at Salafi jihadism, the movement that al-Qaeda represents, in a lot of cases, uh, people who would be considered a core part of al-Qaeda a decade ago are back out on the streets. Uh, you can see this phenomenon in Egypt, where you have people like Mohammed al-Zawahiri, the brother of al-Qaeda emir, uh, Ayman al-Zawahiri uh, out and basically propagating the cause, appear, appearing on satellite television and the like. Uh, same thing in Tunisia. You don't have a violent movement, but you have a movement uh, called Ansar al-Sharia Tunisia, uh, not officially a part of al-Qaeda, but sharing the same ideology that's able to undertake a lot of missionary work. And uh, in both Egypt and Tunisia, you have this as a growing movement in strength, a phenomenon that one could see elsewhere in the Arab world, including in Libya. Well, is it changed forever, or will we ever see it as it once was, or what many people think it was? No, it, it certainly hasn't changed forever. Uh, what you've had is a change in conditions within the Arab world, uh, a, a significant amount of opening up. So whereas a decade ago, uh, this movement would be uh, underground or jailed in places like Tunisia or Egypt or Libya, uh, at this point it's able to operate openly. And their own strategists speak of the fact that this is an unprecedented opportunity to make what they call dawah or missionary work. Um, now, in terms of its commitment to violence, um, it, th from one country to another, uh, strategists make clear that they see uh, what they call jihad as an obligation. Uh, they think eventually they will uh, make war either against the states that they're in or against the United States. So it's a movement that has changed in the way it operates, uh, but it certainly isn't one that's given up its goal of lashing out at the West. I do think their ability to undertake a dramatic attack like the 9-11 attacks has declined. Uh, but the desire is there, and right now they've shifted their strategy in a way that in many ways helps them. Well, talk about that shifting strategy, because what are they doing now? Are they still thinking uh, that they'll perform in, in a different way, in a smaller way, or are they going to try to do something with impact? We shouldn't think of al-Qaeda as simply being a terrorist organization. I think that's a misconceptualization. It's certainly an organization that undertakes terrorism, but ultimately it's a group that has uh, utopian goals and really wants to transform the world. It's also a social movement. It's also an insurgent movement. And uh, what has changed, as I said, is the social context in which they operate. Um, so what's most important to them right now, uh, much more so than carrying out acts of violence, is, is gaining strength for their movement, gaining adherence to their view, and they're doing some innovative things. Uh, in the, some of the societies that I mentioned, uh, they're undertaking um, a great deal of social services. They're building parallel societies, even having people out on the street who can provide security in times of crisis. Now, ultimately, they make no secret of the fact that they're dedicated to violence. But that's not where they are right now. Right now, they're gaining as much strength as they can in a way they would have been prohibited from doing before. We have about 30 seconds left. Will it ever have another leader like Osama bin Laden? That's a great question. I, I think that Ayman al-Zawahiri is somewhat underrated as a leader. I don't think that he's ineffective. Uh, but a man like bin Laden, as charismatic as he was and as visionary as he was, is a very rare leader to come along. All right, David Gartenstein-Ross, thank you so much for your insight. We appreciate you coming back My pleasure. to CCTV America.